morning, good morning. Uh, first off, we have to apologize. It's been a little bit since we've done Led by the Word. It's true. Uh, coming to the very end, closing out Deuteronomy today. I am so excited for Joshua. I think Joshua is going to be a blast. It's funny. I was talking to a gentleman at church Tuesday, and he's reading through the Bible. And he said, I'm about to start Judges. I was like, oh, man, you're ahead of us. <laughs> but we was going through some stuff in Joshua, and I was like, I cannot wait. I, I just can't wait to get there. Um, I, I know this is closing out, but this is some really good stuff. We're getting near Canaan. We're getting near all the good Israel. Mm. We're getting to where we, we are today. You know, they've been in the same location for a long time. I know there's some ins and outs and some wars, but it feels, I don't know, we can associate it better to where we are now. Sure. Jesse, would you open us up and tell us where we're at? Okay. Well, I started in Deuteronomy 28 because we are, like you said, closing out these last few chapters of Deuteronomy. And then I got hung up on chapter 28, and I personally did not go any further with my notes. So all my notes are taken from chapter 28. Um, and just starting out, like this morning, it was so encouraging. Um, really, really encourage you to read along with us so you have the context here. But it starts out in chapter 28 talking about blessings. And I was like, wow, I'm receiving this this morning. This is so good. Verse 2 says, And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. And when I read that, I was like, man, that sounds like an authority. Like it's going to overtake mm. you. Is something overtake something else it's almost by surprise you know and it's it comes on kind of suddenly like to be overtaken like when you're in the slow lane on the interstate and someone just zooms past you it's like whoa where did they come from i was just minding my own business definitely driving exactly the speed limit and this person just came out of nowhere you know suddenly they kind of overtook us and we've been discussing how i know in our lives that Sometimes blessings from the Lord just kind of, they do overtake you. You know, they come out of nowhere, it seems like. Of course, it's not nowhere. It's from the Lord. But then it'll be like one after the other. I know Mike and I have seen that pattern several times in our lives, mm -hmm. like where it's just like, whoa, what's going on? You know, it's great, but it's kind of surprising. Um, in verses 3 through 6 say, Blessed shall that be in the city, and blessed shall that be in the field. Blessed shall that shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and the increase of thy kind and thy flocks of thy sheep blessed shall be thy basket and thy store blessed shall thou be when thou comest in and when thou and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out so i guess a good paraphrase of the last verse would be you know the children of israel were blessed coming and going and when i read that i was like oh yes i received this this is great like i want to be blessed coming and going but this was kind of a stipulation that, you know, that they obey the Lord, they stay with the Lord, and they love the Lord and carry on this relationship with them. Verses 11 through 14 kind of cover the blessings of the land, how it'll be fruitful, um, it'll be plenty, you know. And it was basically like every area of their life was going to be touched by the blessings of the Lord if they obeyed the Lord. And so I was like, wow, this whole chapter is amazing. It's just on blessings, you know. And then I was like, wait a minute, that's just the first 14 verses. The rest of the chapter, which was like 68 verses, um, it's the consequences if the children of Israel disobey the Lord. Mm -hmm. So I was telling Micah before we started recording, I had a title for my notes, just for my own reference. And the title was, I think, Overtaking by Blessings. And then in the middle of my notes, I had to rewrite the title and I called it Sowing and Reaping. Um, verses 15 through 16, 68, excuse me, kind of deal with all the terrible things that would happen to the Israelites if they strayed from God. They would face plagues, slavery, um, the land would like dry up, they wouldn't have any sort of resources or the land wouldn't multiply for them. So we kind of see the effects of sowing and reaping, um, which are detailed in Galatians 6, 7. And it's something Mike and I have been discussing lately. Actually, yesterday, I think, we were talking about sowing and reaping, mm -hmm. just how, you know, a man reaps what he sows. And I was thinking <clears throat> how the Lord really broke this down for them. Like, there there shouldn't have been a surprise to the Israelites. Like, and to me, it seems like they're always kind of surprised, like reading through Exodus and everything, about how they would stray or they would have false gods. And then, you know, they would get sick. Some of them would be murdered, you know, and they were like, what? whoa, what's going on? Like, and the Lord is very upfront about this. You know, he doesn't leave anything to vagueness or you know, to your own thoughts. He's like, this is what's going to happen if you obey me or you don't. And he just explains like the natural consequences 
of actions, when we hear consequences of action, we always think it's negative, you know, like, uh oh, it's the consequences of my own actions showing up again. But there's con- good consequences, you know, you eat right, you, you know, stay healthy, that's a consequence of the action. And I think it's so important to evaluate ourselves and see what we are sowing in our day to day lives. So, like, are we sowing seeds of hate and bitterness and strife, you know, um, anger? The fruit of the spirit isn't made manifest by carnal seeds. You know, that's the spirit, not the carnal man. And Micah was with me. I had a situation two days ago where I did not show the love of Christ. And I felt really bad about it. I still feel bad about it. And I told him, I said, well, at least tonight is a prayer night so I can pray through it. Which I did. And I've had to do, like, a lot of apologizing to the Lord. And I've asked him, you know, let this situation come up again. And you guide me, direct me. I want to be more like you. You know, just use this opportunity to make me more like you. Because obviously there's things that are too much like me, like my old flesh, you know, that need to be taken out. Because I don't want to be the person that sows seeds of strife or contempt, um, contempt or bitterness or, you know, that's not what we've been called to. So t- right now, this is Thursday morning and we're doing Led by the Word. Tonight is Game Changers. Right. And we're having a full service. And my thought tonight is draw nigh to God, he'll draw nigh to you. And I'm teaching... I've always thought you draw an eye to God and the benefits are the blessings. The benefits aren't the blessings. The blessings are the blessings. Hmm. The benefits are he'll change who you are. So I'm, I'm wanting to teach tonight, are we drawn to him if we're not changing? Mm. So I was just going to teach and uh, not put pressure on anybody. You have to talk about this tonight. <laughs> This is, I mean, this is two times. We haven't talked about this. We haven't conversed about this. I'm going to Psalms 103. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be in Deuteronomy. But I, Psalms 103 is what happens when you draw a night of God. And um, it, God God expects change. And, you know, we're surprised. I, I lo- That's literally my notes, is being surprised by the obvious. And it happens to me all the time. Me too. It happens to them all the time. They're like, man, I feel like my life is not in the the best atmosphere. I feel like it's not in the best control. I feel like it's not going in the, the direction I expect it to go. And then our first blames is, well, where's God? Where's this? God ain't changing. God ain't backing away. God ain't leaving you. Look at some of your past choices and some of your current reaping. Mm-hmm. And that that's a painful, painful thing. Me and Jesse, we talked to Dad the other day. We're like, listen, we are seeing more souls saved. We are seeing more uh, marriage is restored. We're seeing more healing. Right now, it's like Oasis Ministries is having all these great things happen around it. And Dad said, this is the reaping from all those hard years of work and seed sown. But Dad said, don't be discouraged that we just reap once. He said, this year we're sowing harder than we've ever sown. And next year's another reaping. And he said, we're just in that reaping season of seeing people's lives and eternities touch. But Dad, Dad's read this and had that recognition. I am currently working on this of when I sow something, there is a reaping. Now, how many is thankful of redemption? Oh, yes. Redemption yeah. is not reaping what you're sowing. Redemption is a God literally died on a tree, a God, not a man, a literal God died on a tree. So I don't have to reap from my mistakes. I don't have to reap from this stuff. But there are still certain laws that we reap from. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't have to spend my eternity in hell, but I promise you, if I go rob a Walmart, probably gonna get arrested uh yeah unless you're a really fast runner you know like. and god lays out a lot of these laws i'm i'm actually in chapter 24 is i'm gonna try to get back on uh to my topic jesse this is amazing we're we're talking like this today but it's funny mine's not right now mine's later so you got to talk with the kids tonight 24 chapter 24 verse 17 first i want to talk a little bit about god um people give god a really bad rap for this part of the bible they say oh he's mean this this and He's a hateful God. He's a harsh God. I want you to see I have two words here. Uh, Well, let me find it. He is a God of love and he is a God of compassion. Mm -hmm. So he's working with his children. He's working with his people. And if you go back every, uh, uh, if you go back through the podcast, he says this over and over. Deal gently with a stranger. Deal kind with a stranger. Deal loving with a stranger. And he'll often say this because you were once a stranger. Isn't it amazing how Christians can be so judgy of sinners? Mm-hmm. 
It's like, man, their life's falling apart. Look at them. Look at what they're doing. Look at their mess. Look, that, that's going to send them to jail. That's going to destroy their family. Oh, my goodness. We're the judgiest people. We are. And God's like, no. No, you're on your way to your promised land. But remember, you was once a stranger in the land. So here's verse 17 again, chapter 24. That shall not pervert the judgment of the stranger nor of the fatherless, not take a widow's raiment to pledge. He's still warning them about judging strangers. I mean, we're way, this is probably the 10th time he's got to tell them, but he's going to tell them anyways. This is nothing, I don't have a spiritual thing here. I just thought this was amazing. Uh, let me find it. It's chapter 25 and verse 4. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox when he treadeth out the corn. So I wondered what that means. So back then you got an ox and you have him pulling and uh, getting your corn ready. What they would do is they would put a big muzzle on their face so they couldn't eat none of the crop. Because an ox could eat up to 3% of his day's pull. Hmm. God, God's telling them, listen, this animal's doing 99% of your work for you. You couldn't do this without him. Let him eat. Hmm. God literally loves the ox so much that he said, I know at the end of the day you could put him in a green pasture and let him eat grass that doesn't affect your income. Let him eat some good pool while he's working. I don't know. That, that verse touched me. God, God really cares about his creation. That was really sweet. Yeah, yeah and it, it touches me. It lets me see. when you, Let's just be, let's be honest. You see people littering? Mm -hmm. That is not Christ-like. God's looking around at his world, and w when you see people treating animals bad, that is not Christ-like. It's true. We may think, well, God cares about people. And I've heard people say this. I, I can do what I want with this place. I can do what I want with this animal. It, this is convicted me. we got to treat everything with this love and care that Christ expects. Mm -hmm. Like, God, God didn't just say this stuff for this man that's doing this field. God said this stuff for us to know. Okay. Uh, if you read chapters 25, verses 5 through 7, you'll see the full framework of the book of Ruth. How they lay it out. And I thought that was amazing. Uh, oh, 25 verses 14 and 15. I had no clue what this meant. Uh, thou shalt not have in thine house diverse measures, a great and a small. But thou shalt have a perfect and just weight, a perfect and just measure shalt thou have. And the days may be lengthened in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So, we got Jensen on camera here. Jensen, I didn't know this. You may know this. Jesse may know this. When they would sell grain, these people would get weights that would be like this is whatever their measurement is let's say one pound here's one pound so they put the grain on one side the pound on the other to make sure okay i'll sell you one pound of grain they would take these weights and drill out holes so they would have false weights so it would be labeled one pound on the outside and i could scam somebody so god said in your house if you have one of them false weights i will curse your days and you will live less on this earth Wow. He said, if you're going against somebody that needs food, he said, I'm going to curse you. And I was like, oh my goodness. You, you read some of this stuff. I, I had no clue what that meant. Sure. Had to research it. So he's telling them, he said, you treat your other man with 100% honesty and respect. And there were no ifs. There were no if they're good to you. There were no if they're better than you. There were no if they never sin. He said, this is what I expect of you, not what I expect of them. God, if you notice, God often says, I'm going to deal with you. I'll deal with them separately. Yes. He, we're like his children. We are. Yeah. We're his children. And God deals with us. I don't deal with them. Uh, so, so that was pretty intense. Um, let's come down. I got 26 verses 3 and 4 here. Oh, this is, this is really my challenge and my main go-to thought. And that shall, uh, really, chapter 26, I challenge you all to read this whole chapter, study this chapter out, uh, but I'm going to grab two verses. And thou shalt go unto the priest, thou shalt be in those days, and say unto him, I profess this day unto the Lord thy God, and I am come into the country with the Lord, swear unto our fathers to give us. And the priest shall take baskets of thine hand, and shall set them up on the altar of the Lord thy God. This is such a cool, cool thing that I've not done. So what they do is you go before these priests, you bring your offering, whatever it may be, and it's a time of thankfulness. And you say out loud, and I'm going to start writing this stuff down and doing this. You say out loud to your God what he's done for you. Hmm. 
And if you read into it, it wasn't quite a ceremony, but what it was, when you say something out loud, it's in your face. Sure. Have you ever had that thing, you're like, I just don't want to say it. Long as I don't say it, someone's sick, and you're like, long as I don't say it, I don't have to face it. Yep. Something's happening, long as I don't say it, it isn't real. When you say something out loud, it's like, boom, this is happening. So they would have these moments where you come to this temple in front of these priests, and you'd say, man, God, you've, you have blessed us with rain. That's something I ain't got no control on. And because of rain, I was able to have crops. Because I was able to sell crops, I was able to get more animals. Because I was able to get more animals, I was able to help the homeless. Because of this, I was able to do this. Because of this, I was able to do this. And they would take however long it took them to list all the good things God's done to them. So I challenge you this week, write down as many, I would like to say five things. I would like to say a thousand things. Write down as many things you can that you realize God's done for you. Get by yourself. Go by a fireplace, go in your closet, go while you're driving in your car, and take a moment and say, God, you've done this. I don't have this power. I don't have this ability. I don't have this courage. God, you have blessed me. You have, you've calmed my nerves. You've let me sleep. You've uh, strengthened our ministry. You've helped me in my life. God, you've healed my child. God, you did this. You know, it's, it's amazing. You'll get a birthday card, and the etiquette thing to do is write back and say, thank you. All right. God will heal you, and we'll say it one time, say, God's good, and we won't talk about it. Yeah. Like, what's the point if God does something for me and I just tell Jensen? I should tell God. Yeah. I should be like, oh, my goodness. So we got to, this was, this was convicting for me because I realized i got to do this more. Um, that's the main focus of my thought, and that's my main challenge. Take time to out loud thank God. And I love praying in our heads, and I love praying in our spirit, and I, I love all that, and I love corporate prayer. But I think we should just have some time where it's me and God, and I tell him thank you. What, what do you think of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, there's a really popular book out right now. Can I name drop? Yeah. Atomic Habits. Um, everyone seems like everyone and their mom's read it. But one of the key points is that... If you say something out loud, you're more likely to do it. And it can be something silly, like, I'm going to do the laundry when I go home. I'm going to put in a load of, you know, whatever. By saying that out loud, you're stating it. And sometimes people hear you, and it's almost like a thing of accountability. If you're saying out loud, like, God, I thank you, you know, I'm not saying you should do it to have other people hear you. But when I'm in the altar and I hear Brother Jerry Stevens praising God for specific things, it does something in my spirit. I mean, it encourages mm -hmm. me for one, but I'm like, yeah, God, you're good. You did this for Jerry and his family. Like, it's, it is more, it's like an edification, really. It mm -hmm. is. So it's a lot of things. It's, and like you said, you don't have to do it in the altar. You can do it in your own closet and everything. But when you say it out loud, it does. It adds a little oomph to it. And you're right. Like, people don't want to address things like sickness or whatever or even tricky work situations like we have a lot of technical things that Micah has to work through and he's like and so I'm like what's going on like I could tell you he's like I just I don't even want to say it right now <laughs> like it adds so much more it realness more to it you know yes it does add more pressure so just like it works in the negative it works in the positive and it works for the Lord absolutely 100% we definitely challenge you to do that this week yeah and I, I I want all of us in the office I'm actually I'm gonna text everybody and say let's see if we can take some time this week and in our private moment and if, if your first time, you may do just a couple minutes of, God, I thank you for this, this, and this. But I bet if we do this consistently, we're going to end up having a 30, 40-minute prayer of realizing, my goodness. And I think when you put focus on what God does for you, you see it more. Mm -hmm. It's like when you buy a vehicle, and you've never seen that vehicle in public, but then when you buy it, you see that vehicle everywhere yes. you go. There's a name for it. It's where your eyes are actually looking for it. And I think, like when mom and dad got a Honda Pilot, never saw a Honda Pilot in my life. Now it's like I park between three of them. Yeah. It's wild. It, when we take time to see what God's done for us, it's going to grow. And then we're going to be like, God's fighting for me right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Jesse was in town the other day. And Jesse had a huge moment of outreach. And then I was like, that's amazing. God used Jesse. We go for a walk. And then God uses me. And I think it had to be that God had me watching that. And I think it's just amazing if we take time to look for opportunities and look for places to thank him, we're not going to miss them. That's okay. just fact. Okay, let, let, me get, let me get where I'm going. A lot of this is in Leviticus. I apologize, but it just come down and, and all this stirred me up. 
Leviticus 44 and 45, but he talks about how you must be holy because I am holy. You go to Leviticus 19 too, be holy because I, your God, am holy. And you go to Leviticus 27, be holy uh, for I am your God. Um, God talks a lot about the holy, being holy, right? So 1 Peter 1, 16, for it is written, be holy because I am holy. And, and I found this in a blog, and this just really touched me. Old scripture is so important for us because when you look at the New Testament, in 1 Peter, they quote Old Testament 69% of the book. Hmm. And that just lets us know that's what they live by. So we can't take none of this for granted. We can't take none of it. Like, it's so easy for me to just breeze past the ox part. But it lets me know everything in God's creation is important. That ox didn't have a name. He said an ox. Mm -hmm. we, we don't know his specific story. I don't know what he was born into. I don't know his color. I don't know if he had any spots on him. I don't know nothing about this ox. All I know is that God cared for it enough to tell a farmer, you give him at least 3% of your crop. If he needs a moment to take a break and eat a snack, let him do it. And so much of this we just breeze through. And we I love the story of uh, the crucifixion because that lets me know somebody like me gets to go to heaven. And I love that. But we need to not take none of this for granted. Um, coming to a close here, please do this challenge this week and realize, draw a night of God, the blessings are blessings. They're not benefits. The benefits are God will change you. Amen. Psalms 103. Go read that. Thank you so much. God bless. God bless you.